I hate this watch, I really, really hate it. I just wasted two hours of my life and none of that has got me any closer to understanding how good this watch actually is. So better wording might be that the CMF Watch Pro 2 is just a nightmare to review. I normally love getting the data out of a new watch and seeing my computer code generate the graphs we need to test these watches for their sports and health tracking. But that's just impossible for this watch. They promise Strava integration, but that just doesn't work. At least no data appears for my two watches. Getting to the actual data these watches collect is something I haven't been able to manage, but who knows, maybe my personal monkey brain just wasn't able to figure it out. All of that means is that this review will be slightly different from my normal reviews in two ways. First, since I'm not going to be able to access the raw data, which would normally allow me to make more quantitative plots like this and this, instead it will be more qualitative, meaning we'll just look at the data from the CMF watch app side by side with the data from my references. The second thing that is different is that I cannot justify spending a lot of time I'm testing this watch when I cannot actually get the raw data out. So first I'm going to use some cycling data I collected yesterday which we will look at now. Then I'll collect some more data during an indoor cycling test and weightlifting session right after this and we'll review that. And finally I wore both watches to bed last night and we'll do the same thing tonight and then we'll have two nights of data to compare against a sleep EEG reference. So let's get to it. And as I said I want to start by looking at the heart rate tracking performance during outdoor cycling and I did two short cycling sessions and here you can see the results for the first session. On the top left we have the heart rate as recorded by the CMF Watch Pro 2 on my left wrist. On the bottom left here we have the results for the one on my right wrist and on the right here we have the reference heart rate which we assume to be correct. And as you can see overall the patterns look quite different. First of all we can in general see that there's very little detail in the heart rate recorded by the CMF Watch Pro 2. There's a bit of deviation right here in the middle where both of them detected a dip in my heart rate. But as you can see overall even between the two watches the patterns look quite different. In the beginning they are somewhat the same maybe, but you can see for instance during this second part the one on my right wrist detected a much lower heart rate than the one on my left wrist and both of them were quite a bit lower than the reference. So my maximum heart rate during this cycling session was about 160-170 BPM and the watches don't come close to that. So overall this doesn't look very good. So overall I'm not very happy with this, there's not much agreement between the two watches and the two watches and the reference. So very different results. And here we have the results for the second cycling session where again I would say there's poor agreement with the reference device. Maybe there's a little bit better agreement between the two watches but even that isn't very good. For instance right here the watch on my left wrist detected a peak in my heart rate which wasn't detected by the one on my right wrist. Maybe here in the middle we see the best agreement and this also looks somewhat similar to the reference device but overall very poor agreement. Again, the maximum heart rate detected by the reference device is over 150 BPM and the Watch 2 never detected a heart rate even close to 150 BPM. So overall, not a first good sign. But let's actually take a step back and make it a little bit easier for these watches. Let's look at cycling indoors. So I'm going to do a cycling session indoors now where watches generally have less trouble tracking my heart rate. And as always, my reference is the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and I also have a second chest strap as a backup. So let's see how these watches do for indoor cycling. It's the next day now and I'm at work and I was hoping to look at the heart rate results for indoor cycling and weightlifting for these two guys. But unfortunately, I forgot the watch that they are connected to, so I cannot look at the results. For my interval indoor cycling sessions, the pattern should look something like this, so with a lot of peaks and also some valleys. And for weightlifting, we expect some peaks like this, where each time I did a set of exercises, my heart rate increases. So we'll now have to wait until I'm home to see how these watches actually did for indoor cycling and weightlifting. I also considered having Rafael test these watches. Rafael, what would you say if I asked you to review and test one of these CMF Watch Pro 2s? To look cool? No, you're supposed to say they're ugly. I hate them. They're stupid. Okay. No, they're not ugly. Are okay. they really bad? Mm, so far, yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to invest any more time. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't want to waste your time. Then I don't want to test them, please. <laughs> <laughs> right on, sir. There's the bin. Wow, it's really bad. Okay, I'm home now, it's now time to look at the watches side by side with the reference and see if they did any better with these other exercises, so cycling indoors and weightlifting. Let's take a look at my computer here. And here we have the results for spinning with the reference on the right, the watch on my left wrist on the top left and the one on my right wrist on the bottom left. And as you can see this looks a little bit better than what we saw for cycling outside. 
So we see some of the same patterns, but we see, for instance, that the watch on the top left misses some of the dips here in the beginning and also a peak right here. And also the watch on my right wrist shows some major defects. We see it missed a complete peak right here. Also, this peak was not completely tracked. And here, one of the dips was also missed. So it does look a little bit better. It's not complete nonsense what it's tracking, but also not very good. But let's take a look at weightlifting now. And the results for weightlifting are right here with the reference on the right, where each time I did a set of exercises, I had a peak in my heart rate. And as you can see, neither of the watches really detected these peaks. They might have detected them a little bit, but as you can see, most of the time, the peak in my heart rate was around 113 BPM. And this was basically never reached by these watches. There's this weird peak right here in the beginning for the one on my right wrist but otherwise they never went over 100 bpm so for weightlifting it isn't very good all right that really doesn't look good in terms of heart rate tracking for the cmf watch pro 2 maybe for cycling indoors it's okay so it detects quite a lot of the peaks at least partially but for cycling outside and for weightlifting it doesn't look very promising again this is a very initial review i cannot get to the raw data and i don't want to spend the time on this watch if i can't but it will give you a first impression at least of the performance of this watch and please also compare it to the first generation of the watch which i'll link up here but let's next take a look at sleep stage tracking maybe this is a bit better again i cannot do this quantitatively but just qualitatively and i just analyzed the two last nights of data based on my EEG reference on this Windows laptop right here, a cheap one from Amazon. So let's see how it did. And here we have the first night I wanted to share with you. Now on the bottom here, we have the reference device where you can see the sleep stage along the vertical axis and the time along the horizontal axis. And I tried to align the results for the two watches. So the one on my right wrist here in the middle and the one on my left wrist on the left as good as I could with the reference device. And as you can see, there is some agreement. So some of the deep sleep, so slow wave sleep SWS here, detected by the reference device is also detected right here in red by the two watches, but it doesn't match that well, honestly. And you can also see there are quite some differences between the two watches. Some parts agree quite okay between the watches. So here in the end, for instance, and here in the middle, well, you can also see that here in the beginning, there's quite a big difference and also REM sleep agreement, which you can see in red right here, according to the reference and then gray right here, according to the two watches. This also doesn't look that good, honestly. There's some agreement. So the second, third and fourth REM sleep segment detected by both watches somewhat overlap with the reference device, but not perfectly. And it also detects much less REM sleep and a bit of extra REM sleep right here for this watch and right here for this watch. So overall, to me, this doesn't look very promising, but let's look at the second night. The results for the second night are displayed right here with again, the reference on the bottom, the watch on my right wrist here in the middle and the one on my left wrist here on the top. And as you can see, again, I would say there's only a marginal agreement. Let's first look at the REM sleep again in red, according to the reference device, we can see that the reference device detected one, two, three, four, five REM sleep segments. And these really don't seem to align very well with the sleep stages as detected by the two watches. So the watches detected both one, two, three, four REM sleep segments. And in position, they also don't match very well with the reference device. So at a start, that already doesn't look very good. Now, in terms of deep sleep, we also don't see very good agreement. We can see that the reference device mostly detected deep sleep here in the beginning of the night. And this overlaps somewhat with the reference devices, but not very good, honestly. And the watches also detect quite a bit of deep sleep here in the middle and even near the end of the night, a lot more than the reference device does. So overall, to me, this doesn't look very promising. And again, there's also only marginal agreement between the two watches. So if the two watches themselves cannot agree, I cannot trust their sleep stage tracking, honestly. The one thing I can say is good about the sleep stage detection of these watches is that they detect about the same time I fell asleep and the same time I woke up. So you could potentially use it to track your total time in bed, but that's about it. I wouldn't trust it to do anything else. And that's not all. We didn't discuss this yet, but this watch also has GPS, or at least it's supposed to have GPS. I always tried to start my workout with GPS, but it always took forever to connect and it basically never connected while I was waiting for it to connect. And sometimes I waited for minutes. Yes, there were some buildings around, not super tall ones, but some buildings at least. But I always started them at the same place where I always do my testing and other watches have no problems there. So I don't know what they want. Most people will do workouts inside the city as well. And if it doesn't work for that, why do we even have GPS in this watch? And I'd rather just it doesn't have it. At least that's my experience. I just got super frustrated waiting for it to connect. And in the end, after a few minutes, I just always gave up. 
By the way, I hope that my testing has earned a subscribe from you and also leaving a comment or liking this video really helps this channel. Now back to the testing, as you might have guessed, Overall, my experience with the sports and health tracking of the CMF Watch Pro 2 just isn't very good. I couldn't do a full review, that isn't because I didn't want to make one, I just wasn't able to get the data that I needed to do a quantitative analysis. Now looking beyond health and sports tracking, the watch in itself isn't bad. The screen is pretty good, it's responsive and bright enough, so at least in that sense it's not bad at all and given the price it might make a decent smartwatch, it just isn't a good health and sports tracker, at least on me. As always, this testing is just on me, so also check out some other reviewers. Now if you're in a market for a sports or health tracker and your budget isn't as high, I would personally maybe buy an older generation Fitbit or a Huawei band, both of these are much better sports and or health trackers and check out these videos up here. Now these are just two examples of health and sports trackers that are better value for money in my personal opinion. If you're mostly interested in sleep tracking and sleep stage tracking, check out this video right here for my top recommendations. Or if you're more into heart rate tracking, check out this video right here. If you're interested in anything else, also check out my other videos down here. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.